Hey y'all, I'm Jess Birkin with Birkin Law Office and we are joined today by my good friend Tom Wordish of Novellus Insurance. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's a fun series to go through together, really talking through all the different stages of the nonprofits. So. Yeah, so we're talking about insurance and today we are going to talk about um, workers' comp insurance. So I happen to have had just gone through a big case with a work comp issue as Tom unfortunately is well aware of. So this is a, a hot topic for me for insurance because I have um, realized that a lot of my nonprofit clients are not getting work comp when they should be. So maybe you could tell us, Tom, what is work comp insurance? What does it do? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. So workers comp is for injury, illness, or death on the job. Um, it's generally based on the type of work that you do. So obviously someone that's, you know, in a warehouse trucking around forklifts all day is going to be priced differently than someone that's at a desk. So it's all based upon what's called a class code of the work that you do and based on your payroll or the amount that you spend on that. So it's for employees or contractors. And this is a big kind of distinction to talk a little bit about of people that are advancing your mission. So if they're core to your business and working on your mission, they need work comp. If they're injured, have illness or death on the job, that's going to be the policy that's going to be res responding to something okay. like that. So I want to back you up because you said it, it, what matters is um, the payroll and stuff. And so can you say just 10 seconds on that? Like that's important because the, the thing that it pays for is their lost wages. Right. Okay. Yep. Yep. It's going to cover their lost wages um, or, you know, a benefit if they die on the job. Like that's part of it too. Um, and the premium is calculated by payroll. That's maybe where I should have established more. So if you have a million dollars in payroll, you're going to pay a lot more for your workers' compensation than you are if you have 15000 in payroll. So what you'll do when you get a work comp policy is you'll estimate your payroll or the amount you're paying for labor uh, a year in advance. You'll pay off of that, and then they'll come back and do an audit at the end of the year and say, okay, show us what you actually paid. If you thought you were going to pay 50000 in payroll and you paid your estimated for that and it comes at 60000 you'll pay the difference. If it came back at $40,000, you will get a refund of the difference from your estimate. Okay, that makes sense. That's good to know. Um, so here's a struggle that I see with small, well, really small for-profit businesses too, but also small nonprofits where um, everyone's afraid to hire an employee. And so, you know, we try to make everyone a 1099 independent contractor. Um, and sometimes those relationships cut a little close to the line on whether they're an employee. And just sort of like lawyer side note, just because you call someone an independent contractor does not mean that they are. And if you get into a legal struggle and someone alleges they're an employee, it's not just they're under a contract, it's what are they doing, and there's this whole 21 part test. So my concern as the attorney for my clients is that there may be um, playing a little fast and loose with the 1099ing of people who might actually better be classified as employees, but for whatever reason, everybody's okay with being independent contractors. Right. I mean, makes me a little nervous. Certainly, so. yeah, and the feds aren't getting the payroll taxes on it. Right. So certainly they're not happy about that. Um, and it doesn't really matter what you call them like we talked about. You know, you can say they're a 1099 all day long, but if they're advancing your mission, your core mission, and they're working on behalf of it, they're an employee. And so whether or not you call them 1099 or W-2 and pay the payroll tax, as you most likely should, like a work comp policy is what you need. And so we'll come back and say, okay, what did you pay for labor? You know, whether you paid it 1099 or W-2, you know, you paid $30,000 in labor, we're going to charge $30,000 and work comp off of that if you want a policy to respond. I think another thing that happens with Nonprofits, so my business is for profit, your business is for profit. We can exclude ourselves as the owner from work comp because if we're the owner, we don't have to pay work comp, but I still have work comp on myself because. And so, just to make that like eighth grade English, that means we don't have to buy a policy that covers ourselves when right. we work for our own business Correct. because we're the owner so we don't we have no work comp obligation right you still have an obligation to your employees and laborers that work on your behalf but as an owner you don't but when you get to a nonprofit there's no owner 
And so you have the board and the director, and you'll obviously know a lot more about that than I do. Yeah. But you can't waive it like I could as a business owner, waive it on myself. So if, if you've got um, a small nonprofit that has, how would this come up, I guess, is the question there, that if you have no 1099 people and you only have the board and they're acting in their capacity as volunteers, as board members, but then they're also doing the work of the nonprofit because that's really common when you're just starting out, especially. Large organizations don't have this issue as much because their board is just governing, but a lot of small groups, they're rolling up their sleeves and they're ladling the soup in the soup kitchen and they're stacking the shelves and they're running the program on top of voting at board meetings and doing the fiduciary duty things. So... I think it comes up a lot of times far too late, right? After the injury happens, after the illness happens, and they're calling you as their attorney or me as their insurance advisor, if they've chosen an insurance advisor and saying, okay, here's what happened. You know, Nancy on the board was out ladling the soup and burned herself and she's got this third degree burn and we took her to the hospital and they asked what happened and we said this happened, you know, in her capacity as you know, working on the mission for Nancy's Soup Kitchen. Yeah. Uh, oh my gosh, okay, gets back to that insurance company. They're going to want to try and recover. They're going to look for a work comp policy to recover on. That's one way it could happen. And then you're, you're obviously far too late in that circumstance if you don't have a policy. So the, the so what, now what on this, from, from my perspective as a lawyer, is you have an obligation to have to carry work comp coverage when you have someone that should be covered by it. And what happens when you don't have it is there's, in, at least in the state that I'm practicing in, there's what's called the Special Compensation Fund, which is a state fund that will cover you as the, the entity that did not pay for work comp coverage, but they will come back and come after you, and they will come back for restitution for the full amount of whatever the damages are. And so, there is no free lunch, basically, when it comes to work comp. So I think what I'm hearing you say is this is another situation where you need to have a good long talk with your insurance agent and, and find someone who really knows what they're talking about because some of this work comp stuff with nonprofits seems a little nuanced. Yeah, I think it is. And I think, you know, you're not alone in, in not understanding it. And that's what we're here for as experts. That's what we, you know, do day in and day out. And we have the relationships to talk through you know, these things with the different work comp carriers and really get a thorough understanding and help you, you know, know what you need. In this case, you know, work comp is a big miss if you don't have it. And there's a lot of nonprofits out there that hadn't considered it. Um, just because you hadn't considered that's not a good defense of why not to have it, right? Yeah, yeah. What did you say in our last video? Nobody is excited about saving money on their premiums when it's claim, when it's claim time. time. Right, yeah, yeah, exactly. Nobody's really thrilled about that 100 bucks they saved to avoid this coverage or yeah. that, yeah. Absolutely. Right on. Well, that's uh, work comp in a nutshell, and we've got more things to talk about with insurance, so stay tuned for our next video. More to come. Thanks for watching.